let's state again these two results and let's prove Lindbergh's Lindbergh's lemma. Lyapunov central limit theorem. What did he say? I don't remember it. Mm, suppose the expectation of an x and j is zero for any n and j. The variance of Zn, Zn to be one for any n and that the limit as an no this was Lindbergh slam I think and no no it was yeah it's right the limit as n goes to infinity the expectation of x nj to the third power is zero then so then converges in distribution to a random variable z which is normal zero one If the expectation of x and j is zero, the variance of zn is one, and the limit of rn of the expectation of x and j to the third power is zero, then we have that zn converges in distribution z which is a standard normal yeah Lindbergh again I don't remember this consider y1 yk random variables which are independent with mean zero let s be the sum up to k of y k y j and assume that the variance of s is 1 and f in which is continuous which is 3 times differentiable continuous and bounded such that a third derivative of f is bounded by some real constant positive then the difference in absolute value between the expectation of f applied to s and the expectation of f applied to z is bounded by the sum of the expectation of yj cubed k j equal 1 
correct where z is a standard normal proof this song is pretty nice okay let's go the proof is really long let z1 zk be independent normal independent normal random variables with the expectation of zj equal to the expectation of yj which we assumed to be zero for any j from one to k and the variance of zj to be equal to the variance of yj my my how to say it my incognita my, my doubt is why we do this substitution again for j from one okay then t which is let's call t the sum of t z j this thing as a normal distribution with mean zero and variance given by the sum of the variances which is which is the same as the sum of the variances of yj and this we assumed we assumed it to be one and t is equal in distribution to z And the claim becomes that the difference in absolute value between f applied to s minus the expectation of f applied to t is bounded by the expectation of the sum. Okay. By c times the expectation of yj of the sum of well okay let come on the sum of the expectation of yj to the cube where does this c pop up from
don't know. Now define the random variables. V1 VK as follows. S well V1 is such that V1 such that S is V1 plus Y1. V2 such that V1 plus Z1 is V2 plus Y2 until Vj such that Vj minus 1 no Vj plus Zj is Vj plus 1 plus Yj plus 1 And the last one is VK such that VK plus ZK is Z is V is the Now observe that V1 can be expressed as Y2 plus Y3 and so on plus YK while V2 S Z one plus Y three until Y K and V three Z one plus Z two plus Y four until Y K. And now F applied to S F applied to S minus F applied to Z or T T T is this is a long expression is F of V one plus Y one minus f of vk plus zk okay it will take quite a long time to assimilate this proof i think here it expands i think i mean i don't know why it why it ah, okay it's we can express it as this thing here we can sum and subtract v1 plus y1 plus 
plus f of b2 plus y2 minus f of b2 plus y2 plus f of b3 plus y3 minus f of b3 plus y3 and so on plus f of b k plus z k but why do we sum it should be a difference Because here we have a difference. If we group the terms together, the first part is the sum from 1 to n, from 1 to k, of f of vj plus yj and the second one are the terms f of vj plus zj This thing it says it's equal to f of minus f of v1 plus z1 and this thing minus f of v2 plus z2 correct yes and so this justifies this kind of thing that we are writing here. Now taking the expectation the expectation of f of s minus expectation of f of t f applied to t is well and we also take the difference in absolute value this is the sum for j from 1 to k of the expectation of f of b j plus z plus y j minus the sum j equal 1 to k of the expectation of f b j plus z j I think Correct. And now the absolute value of the sum is less than the sum of the absolute values. This is a property, I think, of sums and absolute values but 
Okay, we are doing well enough here. And now it is enough to prove that to prove that Minus the expectation of the function bj plus zj is bounded by some constant c times the expectation of f. No, times the expectation of yj in absolute value at the third power. For F we have Taylor uh, the following formula F of V plus X F of V plus the first derivative plus one half the second derivative times x squared plus a reminder where the reminder is of this form even if I don't know why One half the integral from v to v plus x of v plus x minus t squared times the third derivative of f of t dt. Why? Don't ask me why, because I don't know it. And this quantity is bounded by one half C, the integral from V to V plus X, V plus X minus T squared DT. which is this. So uh, the reminder is bounded by some constant C that multiplies x to the third power divided by 6. And this is taken in absolute value. Ah, okay, no. The absolute value of this is bounded by the absolute value of that. Hmm. So we bound the reminder, and by bounding the reminder, we do some kind of magic and get the result, basically. So with this, now, f of vj plus yj 
if we use the Taylor expansion, this is f of vj plus the first derivative plus one half the second derivative vj and this should be yj squared, right? Yes, and here we multiply yj, and here we should have x. No, here we have x. Okay. Plus the reminder. Vj, depending on vj and yj. Which is... Well, and we have that f of zj plus yj, correct? No, vj zj. It's basically the same thing with zj, with zj. And subtracting what do we obtain? We obtain that f of bj plus yj minus f of bj plus zj. Let me try to do it. This cancels out. We have f prime of bj yj minus f prime of bj zj plus one half the second derivative of vj yj squared minus the one involving zj plus the difference of the three reminders. Let me see. And this, well, here it is written in a different way. It's written in this way. Yj minus Zj that multiplies the first derivative. plus one half second derivative by vj yj squared minus zj squared plus the difference of the reminders Okay, and taking the expectation we get that the expectation of f vj plus yj minus the expectation of f vj plus zj 
is bounded. No, 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 no. no. Simply equal to one half the expectation of the second derivative of Bj, which multiplies. But since the variance of this is zero and the variance of this is zero, all this is zero. Well, let me plus the expectation of the difference of the reminders. Because of the independence of Uj, it says, okay, I don't understand how independence is relevant in this expression, but so this becomes the expectation of. Basically, the, this, the expectation of the difference of the reminders because this becomes so this goes to zero. Well, let's rewrite it just for muscle memory. taking the absolute value but wait but we already took it here oh no we didn't take it here forget about this taking the absolute value Here we have that the expectation of the difference of the reminders is bounded by the sum of the expectation of the absolute value of the reminders. which is in turn bounded by c over 6 and this quantity So that
Okay, so with this, we have seen that it is equal to this, and this is bounded. So this is bounded by c over 6. yj cubed has the expectation of zj cubed. Oh, this is tiring. And now, recall, that zi is a normal with mean zero and variance which is expectation of yj squared which we can call b squared and we know that the expectation of the absolute value of zj to the third power is b cube. Oh, okay, okay. This is b cube, which multiplies square root of 8 over pi, which is in turn bounded by 2b cubed. And this is a property of Gaussian. random variables of the third moment so this is a property of the third moment of a Gaussian random variable and now we basically have all the cards to make the final play here we have let's put we also have that b is the square root of the expectation of yj squared and this is bounded by the same thing at the power cube root and this is a property of LP spaces or the LP norm if you want. So, we are almost done. The expectation of Zj to the third power in absolute value is bounded by should be cute. And this is again less than two times the expectation of Yj cubed well this is basically because we defined it in, the, in this way so this should be equal and finally we can conclude saying that the absolute value of the difference between the expectation of f applied to v j plus y j minus the same thing with v j plus z j is bounded by c over 6 the expectation of yj cubed minus the plus 2 times the expectation of yj cubed <clears throat> this because of Let's put it here. So, this thing is equal to c over 6 times 3, the expectation of yj cubed, and if we simplify, 
this is c over 2 the expectation of y j cubed and again we can rephrase saying that this is some other constant c let's put well here it's written like this so let's write in the same way versus this c and this c this c and this c are different and this concludes the proof nice 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 at the end of the day it's more scary than what it actually is but it just requires some handwork let's say and this was just the proof of Lindbergh's lemma now we need to prove Lyapunov's central limit theorem and I think we will conclude with that <coughs> But now we are lucky because most of the hard part was the proof of the lemma. And then we can simply rely on calling the lemma. Proof of Lyapunov central limit theorem. Recall that Zj is, well, Zn, Zn is the sum over j, x and j, and that the complex exponential i r Zn can be expressed as cosine of r z n plus i the sine of r z n this is one property which i don't know how to prove but i don't know how to prove anything basically but in any case z is normal zero one so since we have that it is a normal zero one I don't know if it is because of that but it's Fourier transform can be written as cosine of RZ plus I sine R Z and consider now the difference of the characteristic functions Or Fourier transforms and more explicitly this thing is cosine R Z N plus I sine Z N minus cosine R Z minus I sine R Z Well, here it is grouped together in this way. Oh, but it's the expectation. Forget about this. Expectation of cosine R Z N minus. Okay. 
the expectation of cosine r z n minus the expectation cosine r z minus plus actually i expectation sine r z n plus minus expectation sine r e r z okay con calma con calma ce la facciamo this is bounded by the absolute value okay so the trick here is that we take some things out I think plus i in absolute value which multiplies the expectation of the sign as then minus expectation sign r z hmm. now applying Lindeberg's lemma we obtain that the difference of the Fourier transforms is bounded by sum over j r cubed in absolute value expectation of x and j cubed plus the sum over j we have the same thing again I don't know why And as a remark, we have the we can apply Lind the Lindbergh's lemma because sine and cosine are differentiable three times, and they are less than one, so they are bounded. And now taking the limit. We have that the limit is n goes to infinity. The sum over j, the expectation of x and j cubed is zero, which concludes the proof. Because this is what what we wanted to prove. Well, the central limit theorem. <laughs> the sum of the expectations of the random variables what are we doing here we, we sum over the columns the expectations of the random variables
I don't know. Well, in any case, we should be proud of the fact that we went over both proofs without time too much. So that's a good thing. We will get more used to them, probably with some repetition. But now it's a good time to stop because the next is a different topic, which is conditional ex expectation. So we ended the part on the central limit theorems. See you next time.